everybody. It's time for Tech Talk Thursday with no one else than mm. Neil and Amy. <laughs> Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Today we are going to talk about how to make a great presentation. I know I'm going to be listening. How about you? Neil, take it away. Well, hello, everybody. Good day. We're on we're on site at Wayne Township uh, today, uh, working with their program. So we sort of stepped out of meeting and jumping on to uh, presenting here. Uh, so we're, we're sort of out of our zone and who knows what could happen. Anybody could come <laughs> bursting in at any time and go, oops, oh, wrong room. <laughs> so all the fun stuff of that. But, you know, with the upcoming conference and with, um, with just the, the increasing number of, of opportunities to do online presentations and that sort of today, uh, we thought this would be a good topic to, to zero in on. And, um, you, you know, between Amy and myself, we've done quite a few over the last few years. Um, and uh, even though we've both led the topics and that sort of thing, I, I will freely admit, I will say it here for the first time, I have never made a presentation for years, like <laughs> a long time, because Amy does all those. Um, I'm not... I don't have the patience for it, I guess, is what I've worked out in all of that. Um, so, um, you know, if you need to outsource your presentation, talk to Amy. <laughs> no, don't load us up on that. See, the danger but, in that is I get to make his little bitmoji yes, look like whatever I want him and, to look like. <laughs> and you know what? For most of it, I'm just good with whatever. I, I don't have any problem. But but that's one piece we want to talk about today. And we'll definitely uh, get some input from Amy on that. You know, I know all the philosophical stuff, but actually rolling it out sometimes is more of a challenge. And some of you may fall in that same boat where you're like, okay, that that's great. But how do you actually get it, you know, on the ground? And so we'll talk through some of the different solutions and, and different things like that. But the goal is, look, how can you get a really good presentation put together? Keep your sanity. And then I would add another little dot, dot, dot underneath that. Um, engage your audience as well, that they leave feeling good about it mm -hmm. and and for those that don't know i was a i was a high school teacher for a lot of years uh i've preached a lot of sermons over over my years um uh and i always thought of it this way and this is sort of like the overall thing i just want you to think about as we go into this that there is no way people are going to take everything with them i think we're all pretty clear about that there's no way people are going to probably take more than than half a dozen things with them. So if you really focus on, on one main thing, that if people took that away with them to apply to, to their daily life, to their school, to their job and that sort of thing, and, and actually could put that into use because that one thing is practical and, and all of that, that is a great goal to have with your presentation. And so I have been accused many times of trying to put a hundred pounds of potatoes in a five pound bag when it comes to content and, and, and all of that sort of stuff. And I'm trying to be much more conscious of it. It's, it's, a, it's almost like it's so hard to not do that, but I would suggest, and we'll, we'll cover that a little bit as well, but keeping it simple and, and making it one thing, one main thing that you want to emphasize that people take with them, that if they would implement that, it would make a difference for them in their program. That would be huge. So that's sort of just a, 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 a overall uh, little scenario there. Also, I don't know why I've got lots of gray hair uh, on my little bitmoji. <laughs> because uh, one of us colors our hair and one of us does not. One of us does not. And it's getting grayer by the moment. So, all right, let's launch in. Here's a couple of things we're going to roll through. Tell us about it, Amy. So we kind of broke it into the, the main areas you need to pay attention to. One is your materials. We all, you know, we're all educators. We go to conferences so we can get lots of good materials. Um, engagement, like Neil talked about. We're all here and we want a takeaway that we can use today if we could. Um, timing, I talk about cramming all those potatoes into that little bag. That is that I'm the queen of that. Um, so I've had to learn to pare things down. Um, and the same thing is true with timing because, you know, you want to say everything you can in your one little set of time. And then you end up giving them nothing that they'll remember because it was like a shotgun blast of and all kinds of topics. I, I know. Here's <laughs> the illustration I want you to think about. Would you rather have a, a hose 
that's pouring water out at a gentle stream that you could fill the cup and, and safely uh, sort of take a drink? Or would you rather be like having like uh, one of those fire hoses trying to fill the cup? <laughs> you know, it, th that's the illustration you got to think about with that. I might have gotten the phrase told to me sometimes. They don't want to drink from a fire hose, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to learn that kind of thing. Um, and then, and I'm still, it's a work in progress because it's hard. Um, and then lastly, technology, because, you know, that's, it's technology. So something is always going to happen with technology. And so we'll just go over some of those things as well as open it up for other yep. things. And if you have questions, we can take those as well. So just talking about materials, these are kind of some of the heavy hitting questions that I've always had or that I've heard asked before. You know, what do you provide for your audience? You have so many materials. We're teachers. We have crates and crates of materials everywhere. What do you share? And so, um, you know, the, I kind of look at three main things that you want to share. Everybody, you know, the number one question you always get in chat during your presentation, will you share your slides? Of course, we'll share our slides, you know. Um, so your slides, handouts with your points, and um, really good curriculum stuff. I mean, that's why you're here is to be an expert in your field. So share, you know, we, we are, in my experience, adult ed is so good about sharing with each other because you don't want to hold tightly to what you have because what's one good, good for one is good for all. So um, those are the main things, no matter what else, all the little fun things you want to add, those are the keys that you want to um, definitely add to that. And then the other thing you want to provide is, oops, there we go, is a note sheet um, because you want them and you want it not to be given for them already. You want it to be interactive so that even if you leave blanks, they can fill in blanks because that's a good way to sort of guide them through your presentation and they'll know where you're heading. And, and on that, it's a good place to help people distill what you're sharing as well. And, that, and that's a good one on, on that side of things is you're taking all that you're going to talk about. And then I like to keep that to one page and I like to keep it to the high level things that if they took that down. And then here's another little tip on that note sheet. In case they want to follow up, put in the footer or at the top or somewhere like that, your contact info. So they can reach back out to you um, and ask a follow-up question without you having to write that out a ton of times and, and different things like that. And you got to remember especially now that we are, um, we're going to be doing some hybrid presentations at the conference. That's important because not everybody will be sitting in the room in front of you. So whatever you prepare, if you're doing the hybrid presentation, you have to remember to put a link um, uh, on the, you know, in the chat area or, or provide something so that those who are attending virtually will be able to download that as well. So out of all the materials you can share, make sure that those basics are really clear and, and concise and available for them. And other things are great, but make sure you include those things. Um, and then when do you provide it? This is um, one of the things about teachers yeah. that we learn. Just like our students, do not give them something unless you want them to tune out and start reading it while you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just, it will happen. So yes, tell them you'll provide it at the end of the presentation so that you don't see the tops of people's heads as they're reading through and jumping ahead and not following along. But the only one exception to that would be like a note sheet. Yeah, the note sheet. Key. Note sheet, I would give that up front. Yeah. But any of your little juicy handouts and that sort of thing, you keep those for the end. And look, there's another strategy here. Um, people are tempted to like dive into a presentation for a little bit, grab all the goodies and then run off to another one. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, so think about it from that angle as well. Uh, keep the goodies to the end if you hang around and, and all that good stuff. Something about teachers, they end up acting a little bit like our students. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they just want to get stuff and go. So, you know, if you really want them to engage, make sure it's after your presentation. And then how you share it. Um, again, if you're in that blended style, make sure that you have lots of ways you can hand it out to the people in front of you, but make sure that it's shared um, by sending it to Jen ahead of time. So she has it and have, or have your own um, email link or just have it. And I would have it in um, PDF format because that way, no matter what they have, it's, it's good. The formatting is going to stay nice. They don't have to have a certain uh, presenter or anything like that. to open and, it. and, you know, with word doc fonts and design gets messed up. So be thinking about that. I would suggest on the how to share it um, that if you use Google Drive, um, put it in there and then and then make that a shareable link 
that you can share out. It's not going to be short. I, I totally get that. Um, if you have a website that you can control, you can upload it in there and then you can create a URL uh, from that that you can share out. Um, if you use Dropbox, you can use that as a way to share it as well. There are other document sharing services online that you can upload your document to and they'll give you a link that you can give people. But you do need to think about that ahead of time um, because again, if they're not sitting right in front of you, how are they going to get a copy of that? Mm -hmm. And letting um, them know really clearly how to do that and then yeah. repeating it again at the end. Yeah. And then what resources, resources can you use? This is my favorite part um, because, you know, like he said, I, I usually do all of the presentations, but I don't start from scratch ever. So I like Google Slides because they have so many templates to pick from. So definitely use the templates available to you. Even Microsoft Word, some people don't realize that there are templates in my Microsoft Word. And we can, at the end, we can show the that. Published, the published uh, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint um, um, was the yeah. other one that, that we should have had on the screen there, yeah. um, because that's the more popular one that people are, are mm -hmm. often using. But, but here's, a, here's a shocker you may not know. Um, Canva has a presentation tool. And in fact, the slides for today, Amy created in Canva. Um, so if you aren't used to that or haven't tried that, it has its own inbuilt little uh, system for doing presentation building and actually doing the presentation in there and, uh, with all of that. And they have and then, a pretty good free account too. They, yeah, it won't yeah. cost you won't if you cost just use you their free if you don't account. Want to. The other thing will be is once you get your presentation set, if you want to send a copy of your slides, I would download. So if you're on Google Sheets, you can download it as a PDF. If you're on Canva, you can do the same. If you're in PowerPoint, you can save it as a PDF format. And now you have a, uh, a nice clean way that will look just like your presentation to share and, it. And I would do that PDF with the Word doc too. Save it as a PDF so that your, your formatting and everything stays preserved in that, even though you made it in Word. So the key there is use the templates available to you because while I make presentations and a lot of people say, oh, that looks great. I never created on my own. I, I just I just go in and make a template dressed up. And when you look through templates, and again, we can look at the end of this, when you look through templates, say if you have three main topics, you're looking for a, top, a, a template that has three different boxes or three different, you know, something that's going to fit you that you could switch out those words and make them your own. And less than a, um, a presentation that is like an education presentation. I think sometimes you fall into the, the um, uh, hole of looking for ones that are in your department, so to speak. Don't worry about that as much as, as looking at the structure of the template and, and finding one that has the structure that you need. Yeah. Um, that's more the, important. Some of the best education are found in marketing materials. So, you know, yeah. you, you think you're not business and marketing, but they have really great templates that could work for you. So let's talk about a few tips uh, on things we can do um, to make that presentation a little bit better there. So we've already talked about, it. don't overwhelm your audience, right? Mm -hmm. Less is more. Um, and that applies to your slides too. I mean, you know, even if you want, even if you had say three main points, I wouldn't put three points on one slide because people are going to be reading your slide. It's no different than if they have the handout in front of you. You don't want them to be reading paragraphs on your slide. You want to be watching you stage it really yeah. breadcrumb it mm -hmm. uh, is what I like to say is give them little breadcrumbs and then build on it on the slides and that sort of thing. Um, works out uh, really good there. Uh, here's what I was once told, and I try to use this philosophy as much as I can in things. Um, open with, with telling them what you're going to tell them about. What are you going to teach about? What are you going to talk about? Then tell them, and where possible, again, depending on the length of the presentation, like three to five points is, is plenty to cover. And then come back, tell them what you told them, and then open up for questions. And, and those, the, that little structure right there, if you don't, if you aren't sure, um, go with that. And, and then I would always say, as we say there, less is more. Um, if, if you don't feel like you've got a ton to say, don't worry about it. That might be actually great. Go in there and then start the conversation and that will help uh, mm -hmm. on that side of things. All right. <laughs> I have to say a picture is worth a thousand words. I, I don't know how many of you who might be watching this know Denise Esslinger. She um, she's a good friend of mine who's done some presentations. And if you're in adult ed, 
just the mere word rollover probably gives you the willies <laughs> because there's so many little things about rolling over students from one year to another. Oh, is that what that so is? On her presentation, I said, that is so great. Her teachers didn't shake their heads and say, oh, we're going to talk about rollover. They were talking about how cute the bear that's rolling over is. And now they are in a fun spot and they're ready to talk about something that is not as fun as a panda bear rolling down a hill. <laughs> so I told her, I said, that was perfect. Cause as I looked at her teachers, they were totally engaged. If there was a teacher that, you know, did that same thing and put, we're going to talk about rollover today. They're tuning out, they're playing on their phones. They're making notes to their, their friends. I mean, it's not the same. That would so, get your attention back. Yeah. But I have to admit when I previewed all of the things, I didn't get what that was about. <laughs> I but, knew he wouldn't. But that's okay. <laughs> Cause that's not my world, but but that is much uh, more entertaining. And and look, there's some great places out there that you can you can grab resources like this um, and and be able to plug those in just to add that little bit of difference, a little bit of uh, variety to it. Yeah, and it, it'll make the difference because you yeah. want it to be fun. You want your your audience to have fun. You can mm -hmm. learn and have fun at the same so time. So the next one, don't read. <laughs> Talk to your audience. <laughs> Yeah. It, again, look, I, I, I get it. Some people who are going to be presenting, it may be a first time or they haven't done a lot. They're very nervous about it and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, um, I'll, I'll take a step back and say, first of all, you're presenting because you have expertise and knowledge already. And so some of you will try to script this too much mm -hmm. and you will have every word written down and think you need to do it. Um, I would challenge you, and I've been in this place, I've taught public speaking, I, I, I know this zone, and, it's, and having a script with you is a crutch that you will fall on. So yes. I would go with bullet points only and have an have a overview of what you're going to be talking about instead of trying to go in. And realistically, if you build your slides right, the slides can be the prompts for you to, for, for what to talk about. Next. Almost like note cards. Yeah. And there's so much to be said for that eye contact and talking to your audience, because especially we're all in the same space. We know we relate to each other and you're making a presentation like Neil said, because you already have that in your head. The knowledge is not something you need to make notes about. It's, you know, you're worried about a presentation. So you're trying to get everything in, just talk to them. If you were talking to somebody about your topic, what would you say? Yep. And, and you know what, I'm the queen of this. If you say, um, and you mess up or you have some pauses, who cares? People prefer authenticity over scripted. Um, so that's good. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into engagement now. Um, so it's one thing to have a great presentation. It's one thing um, to sort of be, you know, all prepped and, and, and raring to go and, and all of that um, on your material. So I like to say on your side of the fence, but you've got another side of the fence here, your participants. And again, they could be in front of you, literally, they could be, you could be on a screen and they're on a screen or they're in a room. So there's all sorts of little scenarios here. So how are you going to get your audience engaged? How are you going to plug them into what you're talking about? Let's go through a couple of things on that. Um, one of the best ways to, that you can do this is send out a pre-presentation survey. If this is, if you're doing a presentation, you know who's coming, get some, get some feedback. I mean, one of the ones that I used to do all the time um, was boot camp because it was a real popular topic. And I wanted to know, have you done boot camp before? What's your boot camp look like? Just a couple of really quick questions that are not like a lengthy survey, just one or two questions so you get a feel for your audience. So you know, oh, half of these people I'm talking to have never done a boot camp before. Half of these people um, are math teachers and I'm I have a reading topic, <laughs> you know. So so make sure that you you have you know some pre-questions that you can ask. But again, we're all educators and we're so busy. So don't make it something that's labor intensive. Just send out a quick survey. And and that could literally be in the room, raise hands, right? That could be that. Mm -hmm. It could be um, put in chat if you're online as well, just to get a sense of where people are at. Mm -hmm. And then throughout your presentation, stop and ask questions sporadically because you don't want to always wait till the end. And you want it to, that it feels more interactive if you stop and ask them questions, questions that would you would identify with your audience. Like you might say, you know, have this, has this ever happened to you? 
Or do you ever feel like, and we could all fill in blanks that we know that we share those feelings with people, you know, just like I said, rollover, we're all like, oh yeah, that's a really intense time. Or, you know, any, any kind of topic that, you know, you'll relate with your audience, bring it up and say, do you ever feel like this? Because they're going to say, yes, that is me. And they're going to sit up and listen because they know that you feel their pain. Now, the, the challenge with, with this sometimes is it opens a can of worms quotes and the conversation gets off track during your presentation. Uh, so what, how, what would you say, Amy, about getting it back on track when that happens? So, well, I would turn to you and say, get us on track because I'm talking. <laughs> because you'd be the one that would be off track. Is <laughs> that no, what you're saying? No. I would say, you know, it's, it's always okay to use, okay, the classroom strategies you use in the classroom are just as good for adults. Like I said, we're all just grown up students. So, when, when they get off track, say, this, are, this is such a great conversation, but I want to make sure I get all this content to you. Let's get back here. You know, just something quick, but start it out like we do with our classroom strategies with a positive. I'm so glad you guys are talking. This is awesome. This is a great point. Now let's move on, yeah. <laughs> you know, kind and of thing. Sometimes if I'm in a, literally in the space doing presentation, I'll write it on the board to come back to. So I've got a couple bullet points up there. So when we get done, it doesn't get like lost or forgotten in that. So. But that's an important one to think about because sometimes you open that that engagement a little too wide and then all of a sudden it's like, ah, let's get back to the presentation. So don't feel bad about pulling people back to the agenda at hand. And in my days when I was doing a lot of professional development, I used like if, if you've ever had co cooperative learning strategies like Kagan and structures and things like that use it with adults. It's so, it's so fun to see that in the context of your own adult content, because it works the same. I mean, everybody, everybody is engaged that way. And then timing is something else that we talk about. Like we said, we've got to always be cognizant of it. Don't talk the whole time. Just like with our students, we would never plan a class where we lecture from bell to bell. Um, and it's the same thing in a conference, especially when you've been in lots of you know, lots of little breakout sessions and maybe you're the fourth one for the day. You don't want to sit and get the whole time. Um, so make sure you and, break and it up. That's, you bring up a really good point to think about. Think about where you are in the day as well. If you're right after lunch, if you're the last session of the day, that changes the dynamics of, of people who are attending and what's going on in their world. So be cognizant of the time of your presentation uh, as well to see where people might be at. If they've had four or five for the day, you, you might want to look at doing it a little differently, whereas the first one of the day could be looked at slightly differently as well. And you sort of divide up your time into I wouldn't have any more one topic have definitely not have any more than 15 minutes I'd say 10 minutes on each topic so you got an hour I would divide it up for 10 minute time slots you know just something like you would do with students because their attention spans need to shift to something different every so often and then leave time sort of for workshopping what I mean is if you're teaching them how to do something then leave time for, for them to work because they're usually in there with a colleague and say, okay, what does this look like in your program? And have them work in small groups and, and actually get into it. I mean, time is such a commodity for us. So let's use some of that time to say, okay, you know, we, we did a, conf a presentation one time on how to make uh, things with Canva. Okay, well, let's get in Canva and let's try it. Let's make a flyer, you know, that kind of thing. So let them do that. Again, we always talked about leave time for questions, and I'm, I'm kind of terrible. I see a whole bunch of chat. We probably have some questions in the chat, but if you have questions, <laughs> if you have questions in the chat, or if you have questions in the room, don't make them wait to the end all the time, because sometimes, you know, it's, it's best in the moment. But that being said, make sure you always leave that time at the end for those concluding questions. And like I said, <laughs> say, I'd love to talk with you more about this. Let's, let's, let's get a time to talk, but not have that conversation in the presentation which yeah. is really hard for me, yeah. but you have to do it. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about technology. My favorite part of the whole thing there, right? Which is many people's least favorite part of, uh, of all of that. Um, here's something I'm going to say on, on this. And this is what we're not doing today. Um, well, normally when we present from our office, we have two monitors. So I'm able to structure the presentation on one, the chat and everybody's smiling faces or sleepy eyes, depending on how far we're in on the presentation, et cetera, all of those things. And I can see everything. Today, we're on one laptop. 
So we're a little limited to be able to see everything like I normally would. So a couple of things you can do. Number one, you could log in with a second computer and have some of that on a second or, or a phone or, a, or an iPad or, or a tablet or some other device. You could log into the meeting if you're presenting online with two different devices. And we have Neil's phone right here. I, I actually the, have. With and, our notes. <laughs> and, and it's exactly what I, I was going to say is like, I have the presentation here on my phone. So I'm actually looking ahead at the slide. So I know what's coming up next. Now, uh, a, a less techie way of doing this would be to print your slides and have them on the desk in front of you, right? But, you know, I've got to do it techie style here. I might be guilty um, of printing sometimes. But, but, the, but the point is aligning your technology, practicing and that sort of thing. So let's talk about online, first of all. Um, you want to put a good slideshow together. And by good, that doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to have a million transitions and all these sorts of things. I think you break up the screen and I'm, I've done slideshows where I've got a nice, simple background. I might have logo or branding on it, my name or something like that. And then each slide is just another point. And then, and then maybe an image on that, on that slide or to follow, but it's just simple and it just follows a simple step. Will you have more slides? Yes. But you will make it more bite-sized as you go through. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you don't have to worry about the transitions if you do that. It's just one point, you yep. slide to the next slide. And then if you're online, ask the audience to use the chat um, and, and really do some fun stuff with it, right? Yeah, yeah. So open it up with nothing about your topic. Say, you know, what's the best thing you did this summer? Put it in the chat for us, yep. you know, that kind yep. of thing. So that they're not like, oh, I don't want to chat. They've already chatted once and they know what they, you know, they're like, oh, this is good. So then when they have a question, it's not so intimidating to say, oh, I don't want to get in the chat. So it, it's really good. Open yep. it. It's just like our classroom strategy. Start with something and, fun and get into the content. And look, content. if you're doing it online, ask people to have their cameras on. I know people won't, but I did a presentation once where every single person had their camera off. And I felt like I was talking to a, a, a room with nobody in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's how it felt because I couldn't see anybody's eyes. I couldn't see any faces. I couldn't, I couldn't get a read on, on anything, which I, I rely on a lot. Definitely have them mute their mics. And, and with most software, you'd be able to do that uh, for them. So that, that manages that. But, but ask them to have the cameras on so you can see smiling faces. Look, I, I, I don't ever worry about putting the camera on or off uh, with all that. Amy, less so sometimes. Yeah. She's like, oh, I'm not ready to be on the screen with, you know, <laughs> with my face and all that sort of thing. You know what? The, none of these are that big and blowing up that they can see every pore on your face or anything like that. <laughs> so encourage people to sort of jump in that way. They can see you. You should be able to see them. <laughs> I used to say, I haven't had my makeup on yet. You can't no. even tell if I have makeup on. You know what? <laughs> I didn't put my makeup on today. We're good here. So, uh, with all of that, but, but it is, it's, it's just a good way to get engagement and connect with all of that. Yep. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I said, we feed off of those reactions. So pay attention to those reactions. If, and especially if you're, you know, if you're doing online, make sure you can see that because you can see confusion, just like if you're in a classroom, you can see when people are lost, you can see when people are not hearing you just different things like that. So yeah. read those faces. And then uh, the last thing you okay. had on there was just to watch the chat sporadically for questions. And again, that will be best done when you have everything set up. We're going to talk about in the next step, but everything set up in advance and are well set and you've got everything placed where you need it uh, with all of that. And that's an, that's an important part of it. It's just being prepped um, with that. So, all right, so let's go from online to like in person now. So you're in person uh, and that sort of thing. I would definitely purchase a handheld uh, little clicker device to advance your slides. That way you don't have to keep running back to the computer mm -hmm. to, to push the arrow button to get to the next slide. Or have the, somebody else do it and say, would you, you advance? Yeah, it just interrupts, yeah. it just, it interrupts the flow with all of that. Plus, you can use a little laser pointer to highlight something on the screen if you need to and all of that. Um, I know I just went to, we were actually in Alabama and did a presentation and I totally, oh no, mine, mine was broken. Um, and so I had to get another one and we just went to Walmart. It was, uh, I want to say around $20 um, and it was well worth the investment. You just plug the USB in, installs, and then away you go. And you've got a great little device to use going forward uh, on that.
Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then make sure if you're in person, your slides, it's even more important to not be super wordy on your slides because you want them to be big enough for even the person in the back row to see it. Yeah. So make sure that it's really clear and big so that people can see that. They can see all that. Yeah. And then do a test run, getting everything connected. Now, uh, we've had meetings about this, right, Jen, about getting uh, everything prepped <laughs> and people available and all of that. So if you're going to be running a presentation, um at, at the conference uh in the fall um you you'll have some help there for you and that sort of thing to get your computer to connect or maybe if you're using a different device that's connected to get access to your content these are all the little things you got to think about with that um and and be prepared on and, and so where you can get there early now i know that means there's another presentation right before you uh, and that sort of thing. So these are just some logistics you have to think about in order to be ready to roll with that. But if you're blended now, you're opening the, the can of worms in a different way, right? So certainly some things to think about. Treat your online participants as though they were there. Don't forget about them. And, and I think a key part of that is knowing how many people are watching because sometimes I've done that blended scenario and I had no idea if anybody was watching or not. So if you don't, pretend like there are people behind the screen, no matter what, in person and behind the screen and talk specifically to them. Um, uh, ask them for feedback if you can, can then see that result or have somebody look and have an assistant there where they can go through the chat and say, hey, here's a couple of questions that came in mm -hmm. uh, and that from online. So those can be dealt with as well. And another little teacher tip that you everybody is good at anyway, is if they know that they're going to be called upon to participate, if you say, well, for how about our online people, you know, put raise your electronic hand if this has ever happened, blah, blah, blah. They're going to pay attention because they know that you might call on them. So it's kind of that concept too. Don't let them feel left out and also know that they're going to be on the hook so they have to pay attention yeah, <laughs> kind yeah. of in a nice way yeah and then find out where the camera is locate the camera before you start so that you can then look at the camera and teach your online audience or treat your online audience like they're there with you as well i think um, i did a podcast with neil one time looking the total wrong way the entire well time. here's the challenge when we do our presentations with two with two um screens um, Amy doesn't use the setup that I have sometimes. And so she's looking up here, thinking the camera's at the top when the camera's down at the bottom one and, and so on. Um, and so, you know, you're looking typically, typically it's lit up and you're looking for that little dot yeah. um, to sort of indicate that's where I need to zero in on uh, or something like that. And so that's, that's a key thing. And for me, he's right. That was the hardest thing for me is I'm like, oh my gosh, all they're paying attention to is my face. Well, they're not, they see your face, but they're looking, they're listening to your words and other things. So I just learned to look at it and pretend like it's a person you're talking and, and to. And that's a good reason to have slides. Yeah. They're going to be less focused on you mm -hmm. and more on the content that you have with all of that. Yeah. So what if, what if something happens when you're in your presentation? That's never ever happened to anybody before. I know that. Um, but here's the first thing to not do. Don't panic. <laughs> Um, it's going to happen. I mean, it, it just does. There's, it's technology. It's going to happen. And, and we are all, we're in a really good space. We're not a convention of business people where we are coming together as educators. So we are the, the kings and queens of flexibility. And so as they say in Australia, like no worries, mate. <laughs> no worries. Yep. And it's hard to say, because in your mind, it's like the most important fire that needs to be put out. But it's okay. And the more you even allude to it and say, well, that's technology and, and we're teachers, so we know how to be flexible. And, you know, sometimes you got to pretend like you feel that way when inside you don't feel that way. But that's that's rule number one. And that's, that's something I still work yeah, on. <laughs> that's freaking out. And just remember, your presentation was chosen for a reason. You have great information to share. That's at the heart of all of this. No matter what gets in the way or what you may feel like, gets in the way of the presentation it's about the content mm -hmm. it's about sharing what you know it's about here's the thing that i've always loved it's about connecting in these presentations with others who who may have been struggling to find this information or solution and now you're opening the door to a whole world of possibility for them and, and think about it that way 
because um, that's important. And, you know, because you were chosen and you have this knowledge, then I'm sure you're also passionate about it. And so if you're passionate about something, you could talk for hours and hours about it. You know, when it comes to, you know, finding students who need our programs, I could talk for hours and hours. I can't even go into Walmart without saying, oh, you need to go to such and such program. Yeah. So you know that you have that already. So just know that it, that you can talk about it and be knowledgeable because it's ingrained in you and you're passionate about it. And that's why you're chosen. Yeah. Yeah, people prefer authentic, casual, I would even scratch out presentation maybe and put conversation. Mm -hmm. It's what it's about uh, with all of that. Think of it that way that it's a, it's a conversation that you're having with them about the, the knowledge and expertise you have. Um, so look at it that way, rather than being so worried about being so formal and professional only with this, that it becomes the, the content gets lost in the process. And like we said, things will go wrong. Just, just know it. Things will go wrong. And that is okay because we've all experienced it. So don't feel like you're a failure and you're letting them down. Because I, I went through that when I started doing presentations too. It's not. It just means you make them feel better about the fact that it happens to them too. Yeah. Um, and so just being flexible and okay with yeah. that is, yeah. a, is a key. And here's one last little, little tip we're going to give and then we'll take any questions. <laughs> but have fun with the theme and how you can connect it to your presentation uh, with all of that. And um, I think that's a, a fun little thing to do uh, is to think about connection uh, and, and how to plug that into what you're doing. Um, and your presentation, it, I mean, obviously many people have submitted uh, titles and all that sort of stuff uh, already, but I go from title on in mm -hmm. um, with that. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe instead of a three point, it's a four point and here's your connect four, mm -hmm. uh, for the conference is here are the four things that I want you to, to sort of know about or hear about and that sort of thing. Um, and, um, and that'll and, be awesome. You know, we're, we're teachers and we laugh at goofy things. And so, so you can make a goofy joke about it because that's yeah. what we do. It's all good. So. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all we had to, to sort of share specifically, um, but, uh, Jen, were there, were there some questions or some other things that we can follow up on? There is a question, just so you know, uh, I was taking notes and yeah. making, con so that's what the majority of the yeah, question yeah, yeah. stuff in the yeah. chat was, but we do have a question from Jerome. He says, did you add notes from a template in canvas? Yeah. Can, I, I, or I'm guessing, can you add Nope. I don't. Well, some people, he likes them. I don't ever use notes. You, you can do it. I, 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 I saw that when we went to download, I asked if you wanted to add the notes as well with it um, and, and some things like that. But you can do that. I'm not the I'm not the greatest fan of it. I've used it in the past. But what I find is that what you have to end up doing is you have to end up printing out like like more per, like less per page, like one per page. So if you have 75 slides, you got 75 pieces of paper with notes on it and that sort of thing. I, I'm, I would rather, I would rather take the approach of building slides that you feel comfortable talking through and then having like, like the slides be your prompt along with some some bullet point highlights and that. That's my personal preference. But yes, in Canva, you can do that. And for audience notes, I would take the highlights from your slides and put a blank. You know, like the our four points that we had, put four blanks on there. Yeah, I mean, if this were a real IAACE presentation, I'd have four little pieces connected together. Well, <laughs> to and that. here's the way I've done it. I have boxes on a page often. So if there are four points, I'll have four boxes. I'll put the heading at the top and I'll allow you to put in that box whatever inspires you that you want to take from that. Yeah. In Amy's case, it might be a drawing of something. Yeah, I always do. Yeah, um, it won't too. be me. It'll be words <laughs> yeah. uh, at, at most, but that allows people to be creative with how they take the content mm -hmm. themselves. And treat that note sheet just as that. You, I have the tendency to want to put all the information on there, but now it leave white space so that they can write not only fill in the blanks from you, but also write what that means to them on there. So leaving white space is okay. I had to had to learn that. <laughs> we all have to learn that kind of thing. And sometimes it's a matter of repeating it over and over again. Yeah, definitely. 
whenever it comes to Canva, from my experience, whenever you use the presentation mode, there's you can you know you can download it in just about any format, which I I do like that because sometimes you know that JPEG is good, but then the you can I actually I like Google Slides better because when you present online yeah. Yeah. You, and you're utilizing two different it lists works so much better so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and and I prefer Google Slides over PowerPoint because when you're sharing online it's easier to go tab than it is to you know bring up your, your but, presentation but some I, some of you who are watching this probably don't have access to Google Slides because you're a Microsoft uh, uh, you know, your systems and everything are set in Microsoft and SharePoint and, and all of that. So Microsoft does have an online PowerPoint now. Um, so you can, you can build it offline and upload it into online, or you can build it on the online PowerPoint. Um, and so your, your, you know, program should have access to those sort of resources. Um, so that's important to note as well. Uh, but not everybody has Google Slides available. So that's something you have to factor because they're not a Google organization. Now, obviously you can have, you can get access in your own Gmail account and mm -hmm. just sort of build it out. But, but from a, from a program standpoint, there are limits sometimes. And even I've even ran into campuses that limits access to some of those things. Yeah. So. And remember the, the templates, no matter what format you're in, there is a template and, and you and have I'm, to reinvent it. I'm okay. For me, I always tell Amy, you don't have to reinvent the wheel to make this presentation. You got a great template. Just put all your presentations through that template and, mm -hmm. and use that same style and, and format just to make it easier and simpler because uh, this is gonna step on some toes right now, but I'm gonna say it. It's less about looking so fancy and, and, and all these sort of things than it is about what you have to say. And sometimes that can get in the road of it. So keeping it simple in that regard, there is nothing wrong with that. You will communicate effectively and uh, you can sleep well at night keeping yes. it simple. If you um, have again, to choose from learn. somebody remembering how awesome that PowerPoint template was or <laughs> the content, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking we should pick content every time. Well, <laughs> we, I run into this problem all the time as we're working with programs on like websites, for example. Um, they want fancy websites that have all these cool things in that, but they load slow. They, uh, they, they don't do the number one objective and that is to get students engaged and wanna connect into the program and know how to get there and what to do next with all of that. So I would go less fancy, less, less beautiful if you wanna put it that way and all that and focus more on being effective uh, every time with, with uh, presentations and a lot of other uh, you know, marketing type materials as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Well, I know I learned some great information and had some great reminders because, awesome. you know, I'm actually presenting this year. Did you guys hear? Oh, oh awesome. Yay. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, they wanted me to do a presentation on getting to know your membership. Oh, good. Ooh. And so getting to know your membership or should I go with your membership is huge. It's like an elephant, but you can manage it one bite at a time. Yes. Yes. So I think say it's too long as a phrase, but let's say, let's think about that uh, for a second here. Um, uh, the wheels are turning here. Yeah, I, I see them. I, you might, I, I mean, you I, might, I can actually might, see them. You might be hearing head. them. <laughs> I yeah, hear them I too. Yeah. Jen, if that, if it tells you anything, I even opened, I think it was maybe the first presentation we ever did together the big elephant with a little bite out of him yes <laughs> so i mean that's, that's, that's what that. sparked that's what yeah. sparked it yep. i did yep. a speech yeah. on that one time and i was like you know that's i need to put, incorporate that somehow because yeah. we have to remember that in so many ways it's a good point yes um yeah i'm 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 drawing a i'm not drawing a really good thing in my brain right now but if i do i will send it to you but i do <laughs> yeah. like the idea you know something like uh, your membership, you know, dash, uh, yeah, something, something after that. But, but it, it's, it's about creatively thinking or even posing a question. Um, are, you, are you using all of your membership, you know, and then in a, in a subtitle, you can have more in the description and that sort of thing. So um, it is about that, um, mm -hmm. not 
because I do think that would be more engaging than um, your <laughs> IAAC <laughs> membership. Yeah. Period. Yes. <laughs> okay, yes. great. Absolutely. What do you got to tell me? Because you here's the thing with that. You're you're drawing a little bit on people's curiosity in that mm -hmm. statement because what you're saying is, are you taking advantage of everything you could get? I may not be. Yeah. Well, let me find out what all I can get. So that I, that's the thought process that goes through my mind as you mm -hmm. think about how to title something and how to present the content rather than being direct. Um, I don't ever like to share my bullet points in advance. So I do an ongoing presentation with an organization in Indy every couple months. And so they send me an email, you know, to send in my info for it and that. And I actually spend probably half an hour just thinking about how I can not give them my bullet points, <laughs> right. but pique their curiosity. Yes. Because I, uh, I don't want to tell them you. what I'm going to tell them. Uh, but I do want them to, to wonder if, and, and want, and read it and go, boy, I'd really like to know what he's going to say there. Mm -hmm. That would be interesting to me. Um, and that presets people before the presentation as well. Yeah. There are lots of people that don't read the abstract. So uh, a title is really important. Title. Yes. Yeah. It, it's like, it's like the subject line on an email. Mm -hmm. If you want somebody to open it, make it enticing and interesting. Um, versus uh, making it, you know, something that is expected and mm -hmm. puts it to the bottom of the inbox. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. sometimes they think they know what you're going to say. And so leaving it open like that is a way for them not yeah. to tune you out. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, great job. Lots of fabulous information. I know I'm looking forward to conference, not only yep. to being we in person, too. but learning a lot of great things. We've mm -hmm. got a great lineup and we appreciate you guys' time today. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thanks. We're appreciate excited it. about it too. Can't wait. All right. That's all for Tech Talk Thursday. We'll see you next month. Goodbye, everybody.